Welcome back to It's Not a Sport, Season 3, Episode 7. This week, um, we're going to be talking about uh, the replacement for E3, uh, that being the Summer Games Fest. So, it's going to be an interesting talk. Um, it's inter- it's mostly talking about how uh, it's going to change up this industry overall um, and what it's going to mean for... Uh, indie developers and big publishers in the future right now um for news this week they're actually again even though the summer games is about news there isn't a lot of news it's been mostly on the quiet side and it's going to be for a while now um there are rumors that uh we're supposed to get some sony stuff soon uh, I hope that's true, but again, we're going to have to just wait and see, excuse me. So, uh, we're just going to go into game announcements and then right into the talk. So a relatively short episode this week. So, uh, so games that are coming out this week are, uh, Minecraft Dungeons comes out this week. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath, uh, comes out. Uh, the Elder Scrolls uh, Online expansion comes out. Wild Star, uh, uh, Face Star Online Two, Rika, Dungeon Defenders Awaken, uh, Fly Punch Boom. Uh, the and then at the end of the month uh, will be Bioshock Collection, Borderlands Legacy Collection, XCOM Two, and Xenoblade Chronicles Two Definitive Edition for the Switch. All those comes out for the Switch. So those are probably what's to look forward to. Though we got some cool announcements from actually the Summer Game uh, Fest. Uh, In June 2nd, Valorant will come to PC. So it actually launches. I just did an episode about Valorant last week. So make sure to go check that out. But that launches on June 2nd. Uh, It's For those in the closed beta though, um, like me, uh, rank will be reset in your rewards. So the money that you spent will also be reset. But things like um, uh, if you earn the beta rewards, like the beta keychain or whatever, those don't get reset. And rank will not be available at the start. They'll make it available in a couple of weeks. Um, and also esports, if you're wondering why I skipped over esports, it's still the off season for a lot of games. Uh, it's, again, it's not going to start up for a while, probably late June or uh, July, I would suspect, but like all league leagues are done right now. And uh, there's been some trades in the Overwatch League and, and nothing really noteworthy. Everything's just done, no one's playing. Uh, and that's just what, you know, the off season is between splits. So uh, with that being said, that kind of sums up the news portion. I know, really short, Not there's really nothing going on right now. Uh, So we're just going to get straight into our talk, which is the Summer Games Fest. I hope you enjoy. So this week, we're talking about something I think is interesting. It's replacing E3 and um, GDC this year since COVID uh, stroke, unfortunately. It's very unusual, and this is the way that it happened, I think. Um, Usually, 
each year I do a pre E3 show. And then I go over the news for E3, and then I go over like what my favorite. So usually, like the E3 is kind of like my busiest time of the year for the show, and I talk about uh, basically the span of the conference. The show actually first started when I was in E3, um, so it's it's kind of a special time for it's not a sport and the gaming industry as a whole. But this year, in the wake of COVID. Um, a lot of things happen. E3 got canceled. E3's already been kind of dying in a sense. Um, and we got the Summer Games Fest, which is hosted by the dude who does the Game Awards, who has some sort of in with Microsoft. I know that. He has to. Uh, and um, he decided to, among others, to host uh, the Summer Games Fest starting from May to August 2020, so basically all summer. And it's very, uh, it's been interesting so far. Um, there really hasn't been anything, but why is this really interesting that this is the way it happened? Is because other game companies can just do their own show, like Nintendo. But before we get into that, I kind of want to take a step back, because it's not just them doing this, but IGN has also decided to like do their own game shows uh, and you know Kotaku or Twitch or whatever. It's the, it's basically the same thing they would be doing during E3 where uh, they're just f filling the time between the conferences with like smaller games or some people who just announced their games come on and they talk about it is what they've been doing. But uh, those kind of got overshadowed like they normally do and the summer games fest has kind of gone ahead and replaced e3 they've had about four shows already um one was again talking about unreal engine 5 that was that reveal the other was the tony hawk pro skater reveal then some nintendo stuff uh with i believe they did the last of us on there when they announced the release date and the ghost of shima nothing new and then the valorant uh update as well it's been their last four shows and it's been nothing new uh the only real big announcement i think out of any of these shows has been unreal engine 5 uh tony hawk got leaked i believe uh ghost of shima and the uh, last of us are games that we knew were coming out sometime this year and valorant as well we knew was coming out sometime this year so overall it's kind of fell flat um, but they do have some really big sponsors, being that 2K, Activision, uh, Bandit, Namco, uh, Bethesda, Blizzard, uh, which is same as Activision, uh, Bungie, CD Projekt uh, Red, uh, Digital Extreme, EA, Sony, Private Division, Riot, Square Enix, Steam, Warner Brothers, Xbox, Epic Games, and Ubisoft are publishers that are going to use this platform but decidedly more. Uh, but it's also wouldn't be a surprise that EA, Sony, Xbox, uh, Square, uh, 2K, Bungie, Bl uh, Blizzard, Beth uh, Bethesda, just do their own thing, really. And Epic, just do their own thing. And Ubisoft as well. So, with that being said... Uh, this coming in and replacing E3, um, it's kind of to be expected, but why I think it's so odd is again, these companies, these publishers have a huge backing. E3, you have to go back to E3 for the last couple of years, since probably 2018, which is the E3 that I've attended, it has gone downhill tremendously. 2018, uh, I believe is, was the last, um, E3 that Sony was actually at. Uh, they actually had a booth there. Um, I remember it. But after that, uh, 2019, they said they weren't attending. There's no booth at E3. And then after that, again, in, uh, this year, if there was going to be E3, they said that they also were not going to attend. Um, Nintendo, for years now, even though they've had a booth at E3, they don't throw a huge E3 conference like they used to. They do directs and they just, you know, do a hour long video showing off what they have and bada beep boop bow, there you go. They just do directs. 
and that's all they need to do. Um, they decided that they weren't going to do their traditional June Direct for this year as they would normally around E3. Um, probably because either they couldn't get uh, staff ready or production up to par as they wanted to, or they just don't have anything to announce. I know Nintendo did publicly say that uh, this pandemic has affected software development as a whole, and even though we may not see the blunt of it now in 2021, we definitely will see it hit uh, development. Uh, Microsoft heads Phil, Sp uh, Sp Phil Spencer uh, said that uh, Phil Spencer said that uh, certain aspects of game development, like motion uh, capture, has completely stopped, or like big audio things. But of course they have. So um, the game development is kind of at a halt. You know, I've said it before that if you uh, have a game out there currently you're good but if you're in the process of developing it you and you're nowhere near close to the end you're going to see some major trouble so these companies uh just doing their own thing is a huge thing i expect ubisoft you know they put on a huge e3 conference each year they're probably just going to do uh their own announcement video um same as nintendo that's what sony's been doing for years now of uh, since they stopped attending they just do sony state of play which a uh, rumor to be that we are expecting something from Sony uh, sometime in June because they haven't talked about their uh, first party titles for the PlayStation 5 or really the PlayStation 5 at all. So there's a rumor to expect that. But EA, I also see them doing their own thing and same with Activision Blizzard. These companies have the money and they have the resources to just do their own thing now. And I think this pandemic is really a gateway to allowing them to push and uh just show off their own games just make their own video and just do it from home that's essentially what riot did in the announcement even though it showed up on this game fest riot uh has been uh, posting their own like streams and videos which is from home um i expect a lot of developers and publishers just to start doing this and this Summer Game Fest, really, it, it isn't really a replacement for E3. It's really nothing but a middleman. It's really just a sheet to show um, that, hey, we can still have a somewhat E3 event, even though E3 isn't here. Because most of these announcements, personally, from what I've heard, um, that they've showed, the that being the Valorant update video, the Unreal Engine uh, the Tony Hawk, all those, I've just seen the videos and the announcements individual, individually. I haven't seen the actual streams of the dudes, like, talking about it. I've just seen, like, the, the trailers that they just post themselves and develop. So, it's a very interesting, um, times that we're living in to see what this happens. Because now, instead of three days of really cool rapid news announcements we're going over a summer of just kind of when is somebody going to announce something the bad part of this overall um it doesn't again it doesn't hurt the big publishers like microsoft ea nintendo uh sony it doesn't hurt them at all in fact i think it benefits them from not having to spend all that money on e3 who it hurts the most is those small indie developers that kind of go over your head. When um, each time at E3, there's one show called like the PC Gaming Show. And it's it's really bad. No one really watches it. But it's the show where a lot of the smaller developers uh, can show off their stuff and announce their stuff. During those cycles of filler time for when IGN's filling up the time between the next conference, uh, between the first conference and the next big conference, those small developers are going up there and they're showing off their games that they're kind of making. They're indie games. So that's what it really hurts overall is the indie games. And I think if the Summer Games Fest can do anything, it's try and tackle and help out those indie games because Riot doesn't need their help. Riot has Tencent. And Tencent's one of the mo the biggest publishers in China. They, they, they're set. Epic doesn't need their help. 
you know, Sony doesn't need the Summer Game Fest. Nintendo, they don't need this platform. But the small indie developers, I think, do. Now, I'm more on the AAA side. I like AAA games more than indie developers. But they do have a place in the community and in, in, in the industry. And without them, there's just certain things that would not happen and would not get done. Some of my uh, favorite, some of my favorite games... Uh, are indie games or are not as big and don't have as big as, ba as backing as these publishers. So uh, this platform just really, I think, needs to now start tending towards indie games or just have an indie game show. There's some things that they uh, decided like to announce, like TennoCon. So you like so that's the Warframe game. They generally uh, Warframe generally developers probably they generally do their own. Uh, conference like TwitchCon or whatever or minecon or whatever everyone does it so i guess that's to be shown off here in july we have uh ubisoft uh doing the show in july um f on the summer games uh fest website and then developer showcase probably to kind of do a gdc thing they have some stuff in june june lineup they have a steam game fest for steam they have a cyberpunk announcement coming out uh, June 11th, they have uh, EA uh, Play Live, which is just EA's thing um, in June. And then on June 2nd, they have another uh, dev showcase. And maybe those dev showcase, now that I'm thinking about it, are uh, uh, the indie the indie uh, scene. And they just show it off at the end of the year. And then in August, we have Gamescom 2020 opening live uh, night. So they are doing some things. It's just going to be very interesting over the course of the summer that if this can hold people's attentions and how long this can really go. With that being said, uh, just to sum and wrap things up, I think Game Summer Games Fest is something to keep your eye on. I don't think anyone's going to tune in each week and uh Unless it's like Sony, maybe that's the only show I'll tune into. But each week is very skippable. Um, I don't think a lot of people are going to really have a whole lot of eyes on it like E3. I think that it lasting all summer is probably... It's good in retrospect. Bad right now, I would say. Like It seems good on developers because that, that means you have time to put a, put a showcase together and uh, uh, show it off. But uh, as a viewer and a consumer, it just seems like I just don't have time to really, you know, get hi as hyped as I do for E3 all summer. You know, I have my own shit to do. I own my own shit to want to play. But uh, it's definitely something to keep your eyes on. The Summer Game Fest is it's very interesting product of, e e um, of COVID. And... What I am most interested in overall is how it's going to affect next year. Next year, is our publisher is going to say, hey, let's do the Summer Game Fest thing again, or let's go back to E3. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of It's Not a Sport. Uh, if you want to listen to all of our previous shows, they are up on our YouTube channel. That's season one and season two. If you want to listen to our latest shows, you can listen to us on SoundCloud, uh, iTunes, Spotify, and again, YouTube as well. Um, make sure to check out our website. It's not a sport .com. Uh, if you have any suggestions on the show, make sure to email us and get in contact with us. You can also follow us on our social media. It's not a sport to you. Um, it's It's been a wonderful show. Uh, this has been your host, Salty Waffles, signing off. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful climb.